Biochemistry is the study of the chemistry of the many different types of biological reactions and biological processes that take place in nature. Now, the majority of the different types of biological reactions that exist in nature, for example, in our body and inside the cells of our body, they exist in water. So water is the natural solvent. It's the solvent that allows all these different types of biological reactions to actually take place in the first place. And because of the properties of water, as we'll see in just a moment, we'll see what these properties are, the, the fact that water is a solvent allows those reactions to follow a certain pathway. And water also actually helps determine what the final structure is of these biological molecules. For example, one biochemical process in our body, inside the cells of our body, is the biosynthesis of proteins. And as a result of the properties of water, that protein is able to actually obtain its final three-dimensional shape. And we'll discuss that in much more detail in a future lecture. In this lecture, we're going to focus on two important properties of water, and we're going to see how these two properties lead to an effect known as the hydrophobic effect. So let's begin by discussing property number one, the fact that water is a polar molecule, it contains an electric dipole moment. Now, a single water molecule consists of three individual atoms. We have the central oxygen atom, which is a large molecule, and the two tiny H atoms found on the side. Now, water is not a linear molecule. It has a bent shape. And what that means is these bonds create a certain angle that is not 180 degrees. So notice the bent shape of the H2O molecule. Now, oxygen is much more electronegative than either of these H atoms. And because of that, oxygen is able to pull that electron density away from these two H atoms. And because it is much more likely that the electron density will be found around the oxygen than around the H atoms, and at any given moment in time, that oxygen atom will have a partial negative charge and the two H atoms will be deficient of the electron density and so they will have a partial positive charge. Now, from physics, we know that whenever we have the separation of two opposite charges, whenever a positive charge is separated from a negative charge by a certain distance, there will exist an electric dipole moment as a result of that separation of charge. So what does that mean about this water molecule here? So basically, we have this partial positive charge that is a certain distance, this distance here, away from this partial negative charge. And so from physics we know there will be an electric dipole moment that will exist and will point in the following general direction. Now likewise, we have a separation of charge between these two charges. And so there will be an electric dipole moment that points in this direction. So what that means is we have these two electric dipole moments that point this way and if we add up these two vectors then the net result will be a vector an electric dipole moment that will point beginning here and will point this way as shown by the following green arrow so this green arrow basically describes the direction of our net electric dipole moment of this water molecule so the fact that water is polar simply means it has an electric dipole moment and what that means is there is an unequal and asymmetric distribution of electron density and that gives the oxygen a partial negative charge and these H atoms a partial positive charge. Now, let's move on to the second property of water, its ability to basically form strong intermolecular bonds with other water molecules, and as we'll see in just a moment, with other polar molecules as well. So let's suppose we have several water molecules that are in close proximity. How exactly will these water molecules actually orient themselves with respect to one another and how will they interact with one another? Well, 
as a result of the fact that water is polar, it will have a partial positive charge on the oxygen, and so we draw the oxygen with a blue sphere. So the blue sphere basically designates our partially negative oxygen, while these red spheres designate the partially positive H atoms. And so if we have these one, two, three, four, five, six water molecules in close proximity, they will orient themselves with respect to one another in such a way to basically maximize the amount of electric interactions, they're actually electromagnetic, but we can say electric interactions between the different atoms on different molecules. So because these H atoms have a partially positive charge, they will be attracted to the partially negative oxygen atoms. And so if we look at these two, uh, these two um, water molecules, for example, this H atom of this water molecule will try to get as close as possible to this partially negative oxygen atom. And this bond is known as an intermolecular bond. Now, the specific type of intermolecular bond in this case is a hydrogen bond. So anytime we have the H atom bonding with some type of negative charge, that is a hydrogen bond. Now, what's so special about a hydrogen bond? Well, a hydrogen bond is a very strong intermolecular bond, and that's because of the tiny size of that uh, of that H atom. So remember, H atoms are the smallest types of atoms in nature. The smallest type of nucleus is the nucleus of an H atom. And so what that means is this H atom, because it's so small, it can actually get very close to that oxygen atom. And if it gets very close, the distance decreases. And we know that our electric force is directly proportional or inversely proportional to the square of the distance between our two charges. And so because the distance here will be so small, if the distance is small, the force will become large. And if the force is large, this interaction is very strong. And this type of interaction between the H atom of one water molecule and the oxygen atom of another water molecule is known as a hydrogen bond. So once again, water molecules interact strongly with other water molecules via electrical forces, or to be more specific, electromagnetic forces. Now, the small size of the positively charged hydrogen atom of one molecule, for example, let's say this molecule, allows it to get very close to the negatively charged oxygen of another molecule. For example, this molecule right here. The small size of this allows it to get very close to this oxygen and this small distance basically means we have a very strong interaction. And this type of strong intermolecular interaction or intermolecular bond is known as a hydrogen bond. So we see the fact that water is a polar molecule and because it consists of these very tiny H atoms, we form these very strong intermolecular bonds known as hydrogen bonds when, we, uh, when many of these water molecules actually are found in close proximity. Now these two properties lead directly into something called the hydrophobic effect. So the hydrophobic effect is a manifestation of these two properties as we'll see in just a moment. And the hydrophobic uh, effect plays an important role in the field of biochemistry. So let's suppose we take water molecules and we place some type of polar substance into the water molecule. For example, sodium chloride. Now, sodium chloride is polar because it consists of an ionic bond. And an ionic bond is basically a bond in which we have an unequal distribution of charge. So one of the atoms, one of the atoms, namely the chloride, is more electronegative, so it will have that full negative charge, but the sodium is not 
their electronegative and it will give away those electrons and so it will have a positive charge and so if we place the sodium chloride into water that sodium chloride will separate that ionic bond will break but many of these hydrogen bonds will form and that will be a favorable reaction and so that's exactly why if we take a polar molecule or a polar substance and place it into water, the water will be able to dissociate and dissolve that substance because of these hydrogen bonds. So due to the high polarity of water and its ability to hydrogen bond, water can readily dissolve other polar substances. For instance, by adding sodium chloride into water, we break the ionic bond between sodium and the chloride and we form many individual hydrogen bonds and this is a very favorable reaction for example let's say we form one two three four five of these hydrogen bonds between sodium and water and we form all these bonds between chloride and water so even though we break that sodium chloride bond we form many of these hydrogen bonds and that is overall a favorable reaction so Notice that because the sodium loses that electron, it gains a full positive charge. And so all these oxygen atoms of the water molecules orient themselves in a line in such a way so that the oxygen is in close proximity with the sodium. And if we examine the chloride, because the chloride gained that electron and took away from the sodium, it has a full negative charge. And so now all the H atoms will orient themselves and will become very close with that chloride. And that will form all these stabilizing hydrogen bonds. Now, we know that polar dissolves polar as a result of this, but what happens if we take water and we place a single nonpolar molecule into that water? What exactly will happen then? Well, nonpolar substances basically have very little or no polarity, and what that means is polar substances, uh, uh, nonpolar substances, have a symmetric distribution of charge and so they will not show an electric dipole moment like water does. So nonpolar substances have no polarity and do not interact favorably with water because if they, if they don't have an unequal separation of charge that means they cannot form these relatively strong hydrogen bonds. And so if we take a single nonpolar molecule and we place it into water, what will happen is all these water molecules will essentially form a cage around the nonpolar molecule. And that is not a stabilizing effect because all these water molecules will essentially be fixed. They will be trapped around that nonpolar molecule. And these water molecules will not be able to interact favorably favorably with other water molecules. So when a nonpolar substance is added to water, the water molecules form a cage around that nonpolar molecule as shown in this diagram. This is not a favorable effect because it limits those water molecules. It traps those water molecules around the nonpolar substance and it limits the amount of hydrogen bonds that can form between these water molecules and that is not a favorable effect. Now, what happens if instead of taking one nonpolar substance, we take two nonpolar molecules and place it into our water? What will happen now? Well, the same exact thing will happen at first. Initially, what happens is once we place the two nonpolar molecules into water, those water molecules will form a cage effect. They will become trapped around the nonpolar substance, and that is not a favorable process. So what actually happens is these two nonpolar molecules will aggregate. They will essentially combine and form bonds. And the reason for that is when this process takes place, we basically decrease the number of trapped molecules 
found around the nonpolar substance. So in this particular case, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. So we have 22 of these water molecules that are trapped around these nonpolar molecules. And because they are trapped, they cannot interact via these hydrogen bonds with other water molecules. But if these two nonpolar substances actually aggregate together, they will decrease the amount of surface area around this entire molecule. And instead of having these 22 water molecules that are trapped, we only have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine of these water molecules that will be trapped. And that is a favorable reaction because we basically decrease the amount of, uh, we decrease the amount of water molecules that are trapped and so we increase the amount of water molecules that can actually form those hydrogen bonds that are stabilizing and this interaction between the nonpolar molecules in a polar solvent such as water is known as a hydrophobic interaction and this effect is known as the hydrophobic effect and it is a result of the fact that water is a polar molecule and it forms these strong intermolecular bonds we call hydrogen bonds so once again, if two or more nonpolar molecules are added into water, our solvent, the nonpolar molecules will aggregate together. And this is favorable because it releases those trapped molecules. Around